Hey everybody, Royal Over here and welcome to episode 17 and the season finale of the Sora Road to Glory. And yes, you might be thinking, who the fuck is this guy that he feels he can turn a Road to Glory series into a multi-season saga? But here we are, I am that guy and I will explain everything soon enough, hopefully it'll all make sense. But before we get into that, let's check out game week 238, where I managed to hit the second Ethereum threshold by the skin of my teeth. Everything was looking rosy right up until the last minute of the Circle Bruges game when the Dion, my goalkeeper, decided to absolutely fumble the ball into the path of the oncoming Zolte player, so not only did he lose his clean sheet, he also picked up a 15 score for this decisive error, so at this point I'm sweating bullets, praying to the opt gods that they don't fuck me over, and thankfully they did not. The lads managed to stay on 251 points and secure that 0.02 Ethereum threshold, so happy days there. And on that note, while we're talking about the deal, let's take a look at this fucker's price graph on so Red Data. I purchased him down here two months ago for 0.212 Ethereum, and he has since tripled in value Ethereum ways. Now, I know Ethereum's price has dipped in value a bit since my initial purchase but you know damn that's still a pretty mad upwards curve on the price graph right there so the big thanks to Circle Bruges for deciding to stop being shit at football they're actually doing well in the league now so I thought I would take it upon myself to make the most of this price rise and hopefully sell the Dion somewhere near his peak so I shipped him out of the club for 0.625 Ethereum about £1,215 now obviously if I was more of a whale I'd be less concerned about selling the Dion and more concerned with playing him in so five but you know I'm not a whale I would suggest I'm more of a I don't know a penguin or something some shit. My account is worth over 10k right now, so it's not like I'm a small manager by any means, but I'm most definitely not a big manager. So yeah, I guess I'm a penguin, ready to get eaten by a sea lion at any day now. But enough of the National Geographic shit, let's get back to why I sold the Dion. Clearly, he was a great asset to the account, a number one starting goalkeeper who was fairly young and tied down under contract for another two and a half years, so what's the catch? Well lads, this is what I was talking about, I'm a fucking penguin, so to put it in simpler terms, this was a profit margin I could not refuse. Managers at my level aren't always going to be super competitive in the rare brackets, and historically on my account I've made most of my profit through trading, buying players low in their curve and selling at their peak. Now obviously that's business school 101, buying low and selling high for fuck's sake, but you know it works for me, and that's why my account is where it is today after a year on Sower. So I buy these players out of form at a low price, such as the Dion or previously Nicholas Storm and Quasi Riet, and then I sell sell them at the height of their form, then reinvesting and replacing them with someone cheaper. Now for goalkeepers especially, I think they're never going to really be players that get high-end scores in so five. Let's take a look at the Dion for example. Yeah, some pretty decent scores, especially in recent weeks. He's always going to be someone you can trust on to get around that 45 to 50 mark in so five. But I've just sold him for 0 0.65 Ethereum for fuck's sake. You're telling me I can't replace him with someone closer to that 0 0.4 Ethereum mark who scores just as similarly? You've got Brandehorst, Stevens, Vassen, Lewenberg, all of these goalkeepers who score on a similar level to the Dion except they are a lot cheaper. Now I was originally thinking of replacing the Dion with one of these Erevisi goalkeepers but after some deeper introspection I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to push the Ethereum off to the side and buy absolutely fucking no one to replace him. Now, the Dion has been part of my AZ stack in Global 4 to hit the thresholds, and honestly, looking at my team, I think I should be able to compete for those thresholds every week if I just use a common goalkeeper. Even with the 40% points deduction for using a common goalkeeper, Guvink, for instance, is still going to be scoring 55 on average most weeks. So if after his points deduction, he scores, say, 35 points most weeks as a goalkeeper for me, and the Dion probably gets on average around 45 most weeks, are we really saying that having a rare goalkeeper to get an extra 10 points in so five is worth £1,000 of the Queen's best money? I mean, look, I don't think so. I think the plan for me is to use a common goalkeeper for the rest of the season, use the Ethereum from the Didi on sale to trade with over the next five months or so, and then hopefully reinvest in a stronger challenger team over the summer off-season. Maybe even get a Peter Vindal goalkeeper card to complete my AZ stack once he hopefully gets a bit cheaper after he loses his under-23 status. So yeah, I guess this series is now a Peter Vindal to glory series or some shit. Fuck it. But in all seriousness, this is actually where I got the idea of of this whole season two thing from the account is sort of entering a new era right now i've got an ethereum in the club to trade with i've got a good set of teams ready for all of the leagues that are resuming in full force over february so come next episode the start of season two i'm going to have a new layout i'm going to reset the profit and loss counter and start tracking the value of the assets in the club as a whole i think that will be about as accurate of an indicator as to the profit and loss in the account that i'll be able to get once i factor in my initial investment as well and as i said i've got an ethereum in the club to trade and invest with so i'm thinking of giving everything a fresh start from zero it'll be a good way to follow if I actually know what I'm doing with trading or if I've just been you know one of those dumbasses who gets lucky with the profit they've made so far so yeah stick around for season two coming soon to a YouTube channel near you.
But enough with the channel semantics, I have had a moment of indecision with one of my cards, my Carlos Fierro Super Rare card. Previously I got him for 0.066 Ethereum in the MLS offseason, I planned to use him in a potential Division 3 team, but he got released by San Jose so that put that to bed. Now I expected him to move on to the Liga MX, which he has, he has signed with Juarez which has naturally caused some more interest in my card. He is a previous Under-17 World Cup winner as well as a Football Manager Wonder Kid for anyone who used to play FM back in the day, so I'm sure he'll do well when he plays, but I have had a look at Juarez on TransferMarks.com and, you know, well, fuck me, they have a lot of forwards in the club. No idea how much game time Fiero will get, so I bit the financial bullet and sold him for 0.19 Ethereum, about £375. I'm sure how this decision will look in the long term, Fiero could go out and start banging goals and doubling price for all I know. But at least the worst case scenario is that I sold him for triple my initial investment, so that can't be too bad at all now, can it? I then also sold Olivia and Cham for 0.11 Ethereum, about £215. He's been a very helpful player for me, for sure, and he does get some decent so five scores here and there, but too often than not, he's bench for Swansea and he just doesn't fit any of my lineups right now. He's always been a useful backup for me in All-Star Rare to use as an option, but at this point I think I'd rather just cash in and take the Ethereum for him. So yeah, bon voyage Olivier, I'll see you in another life my G. Now my Ethereum total has fluctuated in this video and I have gone out and booked some more players for trade against so five purposes, but I won't highlight them yet and how they affect the value of my club until the first video of Season 2 of the Sobo Road to Glory. This is just so I can keep it tidy and the profit and losses of the club value clear going forward, you know, just to see if I'm able to make a profit flipping and trading from a one Ethereum balance, so that'll be fun. I then had some other dead game weeks in recent weeks, annoyingly the Irevisi came back from their winter break, played a game and then went on another two week break for fuck's sake, so you know, it's still been a quiet time for me on Sobo but we do have the AZ stack back in action this weekend. Tough game as they've got PSV who are second in the table right now so it'll be interesting to see how they get on. I'm hoping Bruno Martin's Indy is back to shore up the AZ defence and you know yeah hopefully it's a good enough team to hit those thresholds. Oh and during this time Sarah have also added this new my team section on the game weeks. Initial thoughts are like yeah seems pretty cool. A bit similar to the Sora data game week section which is not a bad thing at all as that has always been very useful. Definitely makes it easier being able to click on a specific rarity and see how your players are doing as opposed to end the scrolling through all your players that are in training that you don't give a shit about so you know that's cool and hopefully more improvements are to come in 2022. And as I said thankfully this month we've got the Erevisi coming back in full force, the Europa Conference League knockout rounds are still to come with my AZ stack having some midweek fixtures there, the Austrian League is resuming next week so my TSV Hartberg stacks can finally see some action and then late February early March we've got the MLS 2022 season kicking off so it goes from a quiet winter to an explosive spring in regards to my team so looking forward to all of this to come. Do subscribe for season two of the Sobo Road to Glory to see if I'm a trading hero or a trading zero. And as always, thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.